You tell me. What is happening to Gillen? Uh, I have no idea, though. <laughs> la, 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 la. It's some sort of celebration song. Is it a uh, dance? Like the polka? They sang and danced at my bar mitzvah, but other than that, I have, I'm clueless. What do you think the words mean? I didn't even know there were words. I thought it was la, la. La, la, la. <laughs> See, you, you remember the words in the dance that you bought mitzvah because you're sneaking drinks off the tables while the parents are dancing. So you grab their whiskey showers and stuff like that. And grab a cigar off the tables that they used to give out and go outside with your friends and smoke and throw up. It could be some kind of food. Nagila, that's what it is. Nagila. Hava, Nagila. These are two words. That much I know. Now, is this a big seller? Yeah. Yeah? Who buys it? Jews. Only Jews. For me, Havana Gila is not just a song. It's, it, it, it's an event, and it's an, an entire cultural sensibility. It's a national anthem of Jewishness. To me, it means it's a simcha. Something good happened. It was a, a bar mitzvah, a bat mitzvah, a wedding. There's going to be dancing. There's going to be family. And it's all the Jews willing to leave their food. Yes. To go to the dance floor. Papa Nagila immediately brings a smile because it's connected with celebration. It's connected with joyous shouting, singing, and dancing. Is it what everybody kind of waits for? You expect it. If it doesn't happen, it's like, where was the Hafa Nagila? <laughs> if you don't have New York, New York, and you don't have Nagila, then what do you have? I mean, you don't have uh, a proper Jewish ritual. Mazel tov! Havnagila dates back to the Ukraine, to a particular Hasidic group who would use this wordless melody in their rituals. It is without words because ultimately speaking to reach God, no words will suffice. And it's done through the universal language, which in Hasidic Judaism is music. There's 10 levels of prayer and above them is music. It probably was a simcha kind of song, a, a happy time kind of song. There's hope, but there's also, this is a bitter chord. Tina, this movement. That's not a happy move. Life is beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it sweet? Isn't it awesome? I'm going to die tomorrow. It's that all wrapped together. And when this community moved to Jerusalem, it started to take hold in Hasidic communities in that area, but it wasn't until Abraham Idelson, he was basically a, a kind of the godfather of Jewish musicology, was collecting songs to create a unified sense of what it means to be Jewish, collects this melody and starts to actually write lyrics for it. Have a nagila, let us be, let us rejoice. Have a nagila, venismicha, let us rejoice and be happy. And it takes hold as a kind of staple of Hebrew folk songs and starts to spread to the U.S. and throughout Europe. But then, particularly in New York, Jews were doing Latin records, Jews were taking mambo classes, and Hava Nagila was, this, was a key song in that repertoire. There was uh, a Jewish performer, Erin Fields, who turned, it, turned Hava Nagila into Havana Nagila. It starts as a dance that starts slow. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, ba and suddenly gets faster. Dun, dun, da, 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 da. And people get more excited and more excited, and the adrenaline is going, and suddenly it goes lightning, lightning. Yeah! I sang Havana Gila here at the Vanguard, and it was here that, uh, that I really knew that it was going to become a significant part of my repertoire. I never expected the song to captivate the universe. 
When I went anywhere in the world, there were two songs that stood out. One was the Banana Boat song, Deo and Avanagila. The minute I started the vamp, audiences started to applaud before I sang the first note. And then they began to clap. And as we got to the chorus where they were invited to sing, uh, it was huge. When Belafonte sings Habana Gila on, uh, on stage at Carnegie Hall in the 1950s, it, it pushes the song into American pop culture and makes it kind of uh, okay for anyone to take a crack at Habana Gila. If you do basic internet searches for individual songs, Habana Gila easily ranks as one of the most covered songs in the history of popular music. I think it's a great example of a song that started off being, meaning something very specific about tradition and ritual and religion and quickly is transformed into a modern creation. And it becomes this pop song that is stripped of its religious meaning, stripped of its political meaning and just becomes a kind of happy sing-along that, yes, it's Jewish, but really it's a great melody and great lyrics that anyone can sing and be happy to. I really hate it. I can't stand hearing it. Now, how many times can you hear Havana Gila already? Every bar mitzvah, every wedding. I understand that, that, that there's a certain kind of a, a cliche feeling about it. Like you are my sunshine, you know? <laughs> but it makes me laugh, makes me smile, makes me happy. When you find a song that says, let us rejoice, let us have peace, uh, there's no better signature song to leave an evening with than that statement. Just how much meaning, just how many ideas, how much knowledge uh, is embedded within a set of notes and melodies. It tells us who we should be and what, we, and what we really, in a very fundamental sense, aspire to be. I just had a flash of the thousand faces I've seen through the years. It's, uh, there's no song like it.